Welcome, money makers. Welcome to another episode of the Cash Flow. I am your host, the United States Champion, G Money. <laughs> Zach Ryder, I had to throw that one in there for you. That was was I was awesome. I know why you keep saying it now. But guys, I'm back. We just got back from an international trip in Germany, and ironically, I brought my United States Championship belt back from Germany and the irony in it is that not only did I bring it back from Germany but also that a person from Switzerland who currently holds this but Zach this belt is technically speaking yours I never believe it belonged to anybody else so good luck getting that back my brother anyway we're gonna we marked out so it's time for another episode guys Welcome back. I know we've been gone for quite a while but all that stuff aside it's been one hell of a trip we've been Busy as I don't know what, but like I said, we're back, hashtag international trip, and because of that, you will pardon my French, strap your shit in, we got a long show, okay? So first things first, we're going to talk about some of the big things that are coming up in 2013. It is a new year, and it is going to be off the chain as far as games and movies and comic books are concerned. We got a lot of stuff to look forward to, and we haven't even seen the fall lineup yet. Not only do we have to worry about the fall lineup, but also the brand spanking new consoles, the next-gen systems that they're going to release. So that's pretty damn cool. However, not only do we have to worry about that, I'm going to tell you guys a couple of things that I have to play because, well, I haven't gotten a chance to yet. Not only that, but also watching. So we got a nice long show here, and what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the upcoming games, some of the big movies, and of course, the things that we still have yet to play. Because I just got these. So, first things first, let's talk about the big games releases of 2013, at least the first five months of it at least so far. You see, usually we have to worry about the end of the year, you know, the big fall lineup, hashtag fall will kill me, where the end of the year we, we pretty much drop about a, good, a, lot, not a, a, lot, a lot of money, too much money, and then we have a nice little bit of a, a down period, a grace period, a chill, where they release maybe one or two games in, you know, the sp span of the first maybe four or five months of the new year before we get into the big stuff. Not this year. 2013 has a brand new hashtag on Twitter called Spring Will Kill Me, and it's going to be off the chain. And we're going to start this year off the right way, if you will, with the first big release coming this year being the rebooted Devil May Cry. Now, if you haven't seen this thing, go and download the demo on the XBLA or, for that matter, PSN. It's awesome. It's really damn, pretty damn cool. I'm not lying. It's made by the same guys who made uh, Enslaved Odyssey to the West, and you can tell when you watch the game because of the facial animations and the character animations, but it looks really, really good. Very Devil May Cry-ish, but it's a little bit different, but check it out for yourself. I'm guaranteeing you won't regret playing the demo, and maybe you want to buy the game yourself. Pretty damn cool. Then, if you didn't think that we got enough Hitman last year, we also have the big Hitman Premium Collector's Edition, which will feature Hitman's Contracts, Silent Assassin, and Blood Money, high definition, digitally remastered, coming out later on this month in January as well. And on top of that, they're not only going to just give us those three games highly in, in, in HD, but they're going to give us a big Ultimate Rapture Collector's Edition, which is pretty much just Bioshock 1 and Bioshock 2, with all of its DLC respectively, and some stickers, I believe, or patches or something, and a little bit of an intro into what will later on become Bioshock Infinite, which is set to release at some point in time in the future. So that's, that's January for you, and you can already tell this is not fair. This is already starting to hurt my wallet just thinking about it. Then... We go into February. In February, you'd think, okay, well, we have Valentine's Day. All the gamers are going to have to worry about their girlfriends, and that'll be pretty much it. Eh, wrong. The first big release of 2013, being a brand spanking new game, has so much hype behind it, it actually makes me surprised that it's, it's, I mean, it's actually coming. And that will be on February 12th, two days prior to Valentine's Day. Sorry, ladies, you're going to be, you know taking a back seat to that one for the gay guys who actually don't do anything for you. Which, by that means, if they do, hit me up. I'll hook you up. Anyway. February 12th. Aliens Colonial Marines. Not only is it the first big title, but it's made by Gearbox, of all things. It's in canon. It features the soundtrack. It's got a dangerously awesome multiplayer, a four-player drop-in, drop-out co-op, and on top of everything else, if that wasn't enough, it has a collector's edition with a statue of the Loader and the Queen from the Aliens movie. Yeah, okay, there's the first hundred and something dollars out the window for the first part of the year. Okay, so, yeah, that, we got that to look forward to, and that's going to be pretty damn awesome. And the fact that it's co-op, you can play the whole campaign co-op, 
I'm going to be needing some of you guys there with me because I ain't playing that by myself. I'm going to be scared out of my damn mind. Then, somewhere in there, I know we got Dead Space 3, another survivor kind of survivor horror game, which has a drop-in, drop-out co-op mode again, which is pretty damn cool because that's another game where you're just like, I don't want to play because it doesn't have in-game cutscenes. It's all in-game footage. And, uh, and if you've played Dead Space 1 or 2, you know what I'm talking about when it comes to fear. Talk about co-op. Ah, dude! Necromorph. You get the point. Then, you would think that with those two games, that would be pretty much it. Wrong. We have somewhere in there, we have Crisis 3. We're coming off of what are the games are being called, the most beautiful game on console in Crisis 2, comes Crisis 3. Another game, first person shooter nonetheless, but one of the most beautiful games you'll see. H highly recommended to pick that one up on your computer if you can. If, you can, if your computer can run that at its highest quality, definitely do that. So that's coming too. Ooh, okay, then, you, are, are we done? No. Uh, on the 19th, a week after Aliens Colonial Marines, we get another and a wonderfully hyped game. In this case, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Okay, a lot of people are not too sure about this one because it's made platinum games. The guys who are behind Bayonetta, you know, if you've seen Bayonetta, or for that matter, if you've played Devil May Cry in the past, you know what you're getting into here. Of course, it has this really awesome slicing mechanic. I'm just excited about the play no matter what. And it's play, you play as Raiden, and it's not really sneaking, but it is, but it isn't. It's different. It's a mixture. Kojima's in there, but he's not. But wait, if you you want to know how you can get hyped for this game, simple. Go watch the VGA chart for it from last year, and you'll see the one thing where I was like, okay, so, sold, mine, mine. Raiden literally picks up a Metal Gear Ray and tosses it. I mean, seriously, a, a Metal Gear Ray. You heard, a, me, yeah, you get it. Just watch that. That gets you hyped. Not to mention, it also gets a collector's edition. But this one will have a special plasma lamp with Raiden's sword in it. Okay, that's another hundred and some dollars out the window. Okay, great. Right. Then we go into March. You'd think, okay, they give us these at least two or three big games in the first two months. We'll get a break. Eh, wrong. The next game is in the first month of March. And not just any game, but I'm talking about the rebooted and completely awesomely high-suited, smaller boobs, uh, Tomb Raider. Uh, Tomb, Ra Tomb Raider? <laughs> It has a collector's edition. <laughs> Wallet. Yeah, okay. March 5th, you get that. Then, an honorable mention that they said was supposed to release on the same day, but because the company went out of business that's publishing it, or uh, it would be THQ, uh, would be on the same day, would have been South Park Stick of Truth. Now, this is exciting just because it's got Matt and Trey's fingerprints all over it and being developed by the guys who developed uh, Fallout 3 in Obsidian. You can't be more excited about it than anything else. If you look at, the, look at the recent trailer for it, you know what I'm talking about. But because of THQ's current belly up situation, we don't know. It, it, it says it's still going to release, but we don't know when. So, yeah, but fingers crossed it's soon. Of course, if it doesn't release, it won't hurt the feeling because I'm not going to have time. Anyway, so that one. Then, some, then a week later on March 12th, now you'd think that that would be. You know, like, okay, we're, we're, we're just going to take it easy or something like that. Or, you know, we already got these other games preceding it. We're going to give these guys a break because I don't know how much money they're going to have. No. What comes out on the March 12th? Nothing other than God of War Ascended. <laughs> oh, I'm so damn broke. My wallet echoes. Oh, and not only does that come out, but also has a collector's edition with a figure of Kratos and I think this special 300 pack which you can get. I'm like, all right, that's cool, whatevs. But damn, another hundred bucks. Oh goodness. Okay, so we're, we're, are we seeing the pattern here for the spring will kill me hashtag? Yeah, you see, hashtag spring will kill me. Yeah, you see what I'm saying. Then I think that there's more in there. So I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I think maybe uh, Devil. I, I think um. I think Christmas is in March. I'm not sure. I got I get the dates mixed up on some of those. But I'm just giving you the lineup here. And uh, in April, you'd think we get the, some more, you know, eh, okay, we'll take some time off. No. We get Splinter Cell Blacklist. Now, why is everybody excited about that? Just look up the videos. Just look up Splinter Cell Blacklist on YouTube or on their respective Ubisoft sites, and you'll see what we're excited about. Play the game any way you want. Play it outright, shooting everybody to hell. You want to be stealthy like Sam Fisher can. And just watch, you'll see. I'm not, I don't even have to say anything, just watch it, you'll see. 
So that's coming in April. April 1st, I think they're saying, which <laughs> that's kind of funny knowing the track record that they have with uh, Splinter Cell Conviction. Anybody remember that? Then, later on in April, you would think that again, you, you, you keep, keep saying this, you'd think that they would finally take a break and say, okay, they're getting enough, we're cool. No. No, 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 no. Then we get the masters of the fighting game, or at least one part of the fighting genre, in NetherRealm Studios releasing Injustice Gods Among Us. And not just any gods among us, we're talking about the DC superheroes. And just the fact that these that these guys who were behind Mortal Kombat created a game where you can fight as the superheroes, and I'm not talking about, and, and by the way, I'll take this for reference, DC versus Mortal Kombat doesn't count because that is an insult to me and to all the original people who love Mortal Kombat's M rating and were just upset at the fact that Warner Bros. did not want to see their heroes be killed and have heroic brutalities. Oh, cry me a river, Warner Brothers. You got enough money. Okay, but this one is awesome. The fact that, you know, remember the X-ray moves that you had in Mortal Kombat? Well, this one is going to have these awesome hyper extra super moves. I mean, come on. In what other game can you literally, like, uppercut somebody and have them go into an animation where they fly into the atmosphere and your, and your character flies up there and slams him down back into the ground? That's what Superman's hyper move is. And the fact that their stages have different levels where you can kick them into, and there's different types of characters, like technical ones, power ones, speed ones. I mean, and the roster is the who's who of the, of, the, of, of, the, of the DC comic characters, from the Trinity, from Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman, to, you know, guys like Cyborg, and of course you got Solomon Grundy, I believe, uh, Catwoman, and, uh, uh, I mean, I have Harley Quinn, obviously the Joe's in there, but my boy, the one I want to see more than anything else is the Green Lantern. They haven't shown him yet, but he's in there. I'm a master the hell out of him. And go figure, again, collector's edition with a statue of Batman and Wonder Woman fighting. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're screwed. And finally, somewhere in, I think they said spring 2013, this is a big one for other people for some unknown reason. We get Grand Theft Love Boat 5. Oh, I'm sorry, Grand Theft Auto 5. And I say Grand Theft Love Boat because if you ever tried to drive a car in that game, yeah, yeah you'd have much better chances of riding, riding a boat. However, me being who I am, we all know that I have to have all the big games. And as such, I have reserved Grand Theft Auto 5. And in doing so, I was privy to this. The poster of Grand Theft Auto 5. Well, what do you know? This... What is... Okay. I'd like to state that this kind of is just a really bad reminder of uh, Michael Vick with dogs, black person, and rock bottles barking. Do I, I don't know. Am I allowed to say that? Screw it. So that's one side. You know, so Grand Theft Auto 5 or GTV or GT5V or whatever people are going to be dumb enough to call it. Yeah, people do that. On the other side, you get... Ooh, I like this side. Ooh. You get, you know, you get, uh, you get a one obvious stripper and, uh, uh, and then one who's in character. No. Okay. Either way, we got that to worry about. Grand Theft Auto V is somewhere in the beginning of 2013 as well. Yeah, I'll pick that up and let you guys know what's up. And then, on the big, another PlayStation exhibit is in May or June, I forget, it's somewhere in there, is none other than The Last of Us. Now, this is how badass this game is already going to be, or how confident the, comp the guys behind it are. They brought the game out at E3 last year, played the demo, and when they were done, usually people end up talking about it and getting people hyped. Not this time. They played the game, when they were done with the demo, dropped the controller, literally dropped the controller, walked the hell off. Now, that's badass. That game is going to be sweet! So, that's the first couple of games of 2013 that you have to worry about. But now what about the games that came out last year that you may not have gotten a chance to play? Or in this case, I had a chance to play. Well, what do you think these are? These are games that I'd like to play before these new games out. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to show you guys what I picked up that's uh, going to kill me, pretty much. Uh, first off, Max Payne 3. Now, you guys played this one or not? It's pretty good. I played it. I, 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 I rented it. And it was pretty good, and I figured, why the hell not, you know? I mean, I mean, I like the bullet time aspect and the fact that it's very cinematic, which is what Rockstar is really good at, and, you know, the engine that this thing powers is powered by. It looks like the same kind of engine uh, that will run uh, Grand Theft Auto V, so it kind of gets me ready for that one. Plus, it's pretty cool all around. Then, we have Far Cry 3. 
Now, this one has been compared to Skyrim. It's been called Skyrim with Guns. Hey, I love me some Skyrim. I will definitely give this one a try. And all in all, the reviews speak for themselves. And this game is going to be pretty damn awesome. So, got that to worry about. Then, another game that came out last year was uh, Prototype 2. Now, I've already beaten Prototype 2. But I figured, you know what? I picked it up again. This is going to be pretty damn awesome. I mean, what other game can you pick up a tank and swing it? Other than perhaps maybe Metal Gear Rising later on this year. If, they, if you can do that, then maybe I'll just get rid of this again. But this was just pretty awesome to pick up and have some fun with. So, Prototype 2. Then another game that came out last year which had a hype to it, which was Ghost Recon Future Soldier. Now, this game was really awesome for the simple fact that the connectability to, you know, take a gun apart and put, change out body parts and all that stuff. And if you've played the game, the concept of being able to control these ghosts is off the chain. The teamwork, the four-player co the whole game co-op, the single-player campaign, and it's pretty damn sweet. I never beat it. I played the online a little bit. Really fun stuff. If you haven't played it, pick this up too. You won't regret it. Trust me. Then, a little bit of an older game here. We have Chronicles of Riddick, uh, Assault on Dark Athena, but also has the digitally remastered Assault, Escape from Butcher Bay. I picked this one up again. But you know what? This is pretty cool. Why? We got a new Riddick movie coming out this year. I might as well play a little bit of it because I'm, you know, I like this kind of game and we'll see what's up. Uh, not to be outdone, you guys are noticing these are a lot of 360 games. I did give some love to the PS3 as well. Maybe a little bit out there, but still, I got something for it. In Lollipop Chainsaw. Now, a lot of you are probably going like, what the hell, dude? Did you play that game? Well, yeah, mindless fun. And on top of everything else, the girl is a cheerleader swinging at zombies. And from what I've seen, this game looks pretty out there and insane. I'll play that. We'll see what's up. You know, so we got that. Then, I got Catherine again. Catherine... I just, I remember I played this once, and I was like, this is pretty damn cool. It's because it's original. I like original concepts, and that's what this game is. A real and freaking out there. If you don't believe me, go and play it. Trust me, you'll know what I'm saying. I never beat it, so I have every intention of beating this one before all this other stuff releases, which should be very fun and hard at the same time. Then, uh, also picked up uh, Wolverine uh, Origins, Wolverine Uncaged Edition. Now, this one, again, is another one close to my heart because it has been today the only movie game that has out not only been good, which is unheard of, but actually better than the frickin' movie. And you know what I'm talking about, okay? You've seen X-Men Origins, you know what they did to Deadpool, you wanna hurt some people. But, we have a new Wolverine game movie coming out this year, The Wolverine, and I figured this would be a good way to kick into that one and this one to try again, and I really enjoyed this game, it's pretty damn sweet, so I picked this one up again too. Then, uh, a game I mentioned earlier uh, with games that are coming out, another sequel, was uh, Bioshock Infinite. Now, some people believe it's actually coming out in March, but I won't believe that until somebody who holds it in their hand in front of me that it actually does exist. But prior to that, I would like to actually play the other ones. Now, I know this is gamer blasphemy, but I never actually beat Bioshock 1 or 2. Now, I picked these up just so I could, you know, beat them and finally know what the hype is about because, quite frankly, I hate being in the dark about anything because when I'm in the dark, all you can see is my clothes if they're bright and only when I open my eyes or smile can you actually see I'm there. Yeah, okay, we're hopefully... Can I edit that out? Can we edit that, can we edit that out? Never mind. Then, lastly, for the PS3, uh, the Ico and Shadow of the Colossus collection were mastered in high definition. Now, you ever, these games are supposed to be the ones that you can, you know, argue that video games are art forms, and anything that gets that kind of high praise and being such wonderful exclusives and remastered to high definition deserve a place in my gaming library. Anyway, lastly, but definitely not least, is Dance Central 3. Yes, my ridiculously huge ass is going to try and play Dance Central 3. Now, I've owned the other Dance Central games, and I will say this much. I love to play those games, but there's one song, it's DLC for Dance Central 3, that I personally am looking forward to more than anything else, and I read that. I just downloaded it myself, and that is simply put, Whoopa Gangnam Style. Yeah, you get the point. So, yeah, that's all I gotta do when it comes to the games. Now, what about movies? There's still some movies from 2012 that I may not have gotten a chance to watch, or for that matter, didn't really get a chance to thoroughly enjoy. And the first one on that list is none other than Dread. The first movie released in 2013 is Dread. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I thought this would be a cool concept. I wanted to see this movie in theaters. I didn't get a chance to, but I got it right here, and I'll let you know on Twitter what's going on with this one, if it's any good, if you haven't watched it yet. Woo! Okay. That is that stuff. And not to mention, there's a ton of comic books, too, that I gotta read. Uh, all that stuff. We got tons of stuff. New, new stuff is coming left and right. Movies are releasing. It's gonna be an awesome scare. But anyway, guys, 
Thank you for watching. That is what we got to do, and we got stuff to look forward to. 2013, we got a lot of stuff to go through before we can get into all that stuff, but either way, thank you for watching, guys. Thank you so much for everything. I missed you, and I promise that we will do these shows more regularly as from now on. So until next time, this is me, your host, G Money, telling you if you ain't laughing, you ain't living, and if you ain't living, then what the hell are you doing? Ride this mother till the wheels fall off. We got a brand spanking new year. It is time to have some fun, do it the right way, and that's what we're going to do. So until next time, this is G Money telling every last one of you, peace.